So when I was diagnosed with dyslexia as a kid, I came home and my mom, you know, she said, uh, you know, welcome to the family. Both of both my parents sort of, you know, just sort of congratulated me on you know, an exceptional different brain. I had a lot of trouble decoding, decoding words, decoding meaning from words, and I needed some other methodology of integrating information. And it was during this time that my mom taught me this game called Essences, for which I will be eternally grateful because it taught me how to decode the world and understand my reality using the tool of metaphor. And the way that this game is played is that one person thinks of an individual in their minds and challenges the rest of the players to guess the identity of that person by asking metaphoric questions about their essence. We're gonna play here, okay? <laughs> and I'm thinking of an individual, and you might say to me, Sally, if this person were an animal, what animal would they be? To which I might say, praying mantis. And then you might ask me, if this person were a food, what kind of food would they be? And I might say, a red hot chili pepper. And then if you ask me, if this person were a vehicle, what kind of vehicle would they be? And I would say, a bicycle, a rusty bicycle. And if you asked, if this person were a beverage, what beverage would they be? And I might say, a shot of whiskey. And then if you asked, is this person Mick Jagger? I would say, yes, it is Mick Jagger. <laughs> now, the interesting part of this game came after the individual's identity was revealed. And each of us got to sort of talk about the different ways we would have metaphorically described this person. So if we were sitting around in my living room, my brother might say something like, you know, Sal, I get the bike, but I would have said celery for food. Or I see him more as a cat. And my mom would have said, oh no, not celery, definitely not celery. And have you considered that maybe uh, Mick Jagger is more of like a, a rocket ship for a vehicle? Don't read into that. <laughs> <laughs> like there, there was all this sort of variation in perspective, but not so dramatic or, you know, that, that you would say, oh my God, I, you know, I never would have guessed that person. And what was really interesting is that each time somebody would say they had a slightly different perspective, you would see through them and their lens to see that person anew. And that was really exciting for me that I got to actually share people's perspectives through the context of an individual and their essence. And so through this conversation, through this game and this conversation, I really got to see how differently we each experience the world around us, how differently we each see, and what an amazingly creative and artistic experience just the act of perception is. And this was my first sort of step into my own artistic journey and into the realization that art can be used not just as a statement, but as a conversation. So that's an, <laughs> thank you. people are able to contemplate the possibility that perhaps there is no right or wrong answer, no good and bad. Perhaps there are just different angles of perspective on a greater truth. And perhaps, like different facets of a prism, we each take in the sunlight of inspiration and cast our own versions against the floor. And in this way, our separateness is so beautiful. For if it makes us make art, then it makes life worthwhile. The dilemma of our separateness, the problem with it, is that we feel alone and isolated and insecure and disconnected because we don't have the necessary tools. We don't have the right language to express and expose the stories of our glorious adventure on this planet. It's like, the bad news is you're falling through the air. Nothing to hang on to. No parachute. But the good news is there's no ground. Consensus is the language I've been looking for since I was 10 years old. It's art 
as a conversation and a language rather than art as a destination. And it makes us see beyond ourselves. And when we can see beyond ourselves, then we can see that there is no ground. And if we can see that there is no ground, then my God, we're flying. Thank you.